Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Friday, August 30th, 2019. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk about a boxing play here, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, on my list of fighters who I feel are weight drained. In other words, when I see these guys, I don't think they're completely healthy. I think they've had to lose too much weight to make weight. I think it impacts their punch resistance. I think guys like this have a problem recovering, have a problem dealing with body shots. On my list of weight drain fighters is Sergei or Sergei Kovalev, the champ at 175 pounds. Now, you should look hard at 175 because these fighters have no place to go. They would have to gain 25 pounds to make it to the next weight class. Right? You don't have a weight class they can jump through that's near to the division on the top end. Right? It's 168, super middle, 175, light heavy, then 200, cruiserweight. So you have a lot of guys who would feel comfortable fighting at, let's say, 180, 182 and a half, 185, who lose a lot of weight to make 175. Well, pay very close attention to the negotiations between Canelo, who was on the wrong side, right, of a catch weight when he fought Floyd Mayweather, and Kovalev, right? If they agree on a catch weight, and if that catch weight is three pounds or more, right, as it was, for example, for the Chad Dawson fight against Andre Ward years ago, if that catch weight is three pounds or more, I'm going to take Saul Alvarez in the fight. Right? Understand, I feel that Kovalev is weakened at 175. I know he recently beat Anthony Yard at 175, but rethink that fight. He's almost stopped in that eighth round. Almost stopped. He's in trouble. He gets hit. He looked finished. Right? Several seconds pass before he's able to recover. He himself goes back and backs up to the ropes didn't have much to offer off of them. Let's talk about the guy he fought before that, Alvarez. Right? That first fight, wow, that's a textbook example of a guy who lost too much weight, could not recover, had no punch resistance. He goes down multiple times, looks terrible. Look at the lack of survival skills in the Andre Ward rematch. Now that fight's pretty even going into that last round, right? The round in which the fight ends. Kovalev gets hit up top. It's a good shot by Ward. Never recovers. Then when Andre comes inside and starts hitting him with body shots, I understand a few straight low. But what's noteworthy is that Kovalev is finished. This is like playing a video game where your character has like a 90% rating. Then suddenly gets hit with a few shots and he's down at 10%. Can't stand up. Now I suspect that weight is an illusion across the board in this fight. Right? I don't feel that Canelo can make 160 again. I don't. Right? I think 175 is real convenient for Canelo because then he doesn't have to worry about problems like let's say 160 pound champion Demetrius Andre right the argument would be hey I'm up here at light heavyweight now 
I took on a big challenge, a bigger man. I'm not going back down to 160. Right? And while I'm up here at 175, I'm going to fight some other guys at 175. Right? I think Canelo has taken himself out of fighting a host of people. Right? Not just Andre, not just Golovkin. If Canelo fights Golovkin again, folks, it will be, in my opinion, at 168 or 175. Right? But also think about people like Charlo. Think about Billy Joe Saunders, a guy who moves better than Canelo. Right? Maybe the extra weight. If Saunders says, hey, I'll fight you, Canelo, at 175, maybe that extra weight from 168 to 175, if Canelo wins this fight, would slow down Saunders, who likes to operate on the balls of his feet. Right? Let me just say, too, rewind to the Canelo-Liam Smith fight. That's a very important fight. Right, Canelo hit Smith with so many body shots that I do not recommend eating food right before watching that fight. You're going to be feeling your rib cage as you watch that fight. Canelo's one of boxing's best body punchers. Right, revisit the Rocky Fielding fight. Canelo's just going to the guy's body, taking him out. If he gets Kovalev to lose three pounds or more in order for Kovalev to take this fight, you're going to have a shell of Kovalev who can't handle body shots as it is against a murderous body puncher. Absolutely murderous body puncher. Understand, Canelo has always been one of boxing's hardest punchers pound for pound he has boxing skills. Right? But I think the you know, the fact that he looks like Richie from the Happy Days um series on TV years ago, the fact that he looks like a pleasant guy, the fact that he has cultivated a very pleasant personality. Right? You watch these um shows preceding Canelo fights where he's on a plane, the Maverick Carter show, where he's on a plane and he's singing and stuff like that and he's soft-spoken. Right? I think we overlook the lion in him. Right? The guy who's hardcore. The guy who you notice at things like the weigh-in for Danny Jacobs, where he looks at Jacobs, doesn't get the response he wants, so then he headbutts Jacobs. Right? Canelo's not going to be intimidated fighting Kovalev. Understand, Kovalev is not going to be able to land his jab with any kind of regularity. Canelo is just too good with upper body movement. Understand, Canelo's going to feel that if he hits Kovalev in the body, if he fights the same fight that he fought against Liam Smith, Kovalev is going to wilt. Right? Erislandi Lara, who has a big fight himself coming up, ironically against Canelo's brother, was saying that Kovalev might be too big for Canelo. Which Kovalev is that? The one at 175 who's already weight trained? Or the one who might be forced through a catch weight to come in lighter than that. Folks, every pound counts. How do we know? If every pound didn't count, then fighters like Floyd Mayweather wouldn't be asking Canelo to come in two pounds below the welterweight limit for their fight. Right? What's that about? Right? Understand when these guys negotiate, they literally are in there negotiating over each pound. Right? You know each pound 
matters in boxing. Because when you have a weigh-in, they don't say, Oh, this welterweight champ is just one or two pounds over. We'll overlook it. That's not the way the rules operate. Let me just say, too, you remember Chad Dawson's lack of punch resistance when he fought Andre Ward. Right? Ward at the time wasn't known as a big puncher. Right? Carl Frotch went the distance with Ward. Chad Dawson, the light heavyweight champ, wasn't able to. Right? You lose weight before a fight. You lose too much weight to meet the catch weight language in a contract. Then when you gain it back, maybe you look healthy. That's not always the case. Understand, rehydration is such a big issue in sports that Danny Jacobs agreed to pay a penalty rather than satisfy the rehydration clause. The second weigh-in clause in his deal to fight Canelo. He paid a substantial penalty. Google it. Right? Let me also say too, I was shocked privately that Canelo was able to make weight for the Danny Jacobs fight. Shocked. Right? Let's remember that when Canelo fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., that was at a catch weight. Now that fight was a while ago, but yet Canelo fought that fight weighing what? 164? By the way, you saw in that fight, and I know, Chavez Jr. went the distance. Courageous performance. Got beaten up, but went the distance. But you saw that Chavez Jr. had absolutely no power in that fight. You knew early watching that fight that Chavez Jr. just wasn't himself. He was flat. Let's also talk about where they are in their careers. Now, I think all of us realize that if Saul Alvarez walks away from the sport here, he's a Hall of Famer. Right? He only has one loss. That loss was to Floyd Mayweather. By the way, that loss is interesting because that's one of the very few times in Mayweather's entire career where one of the judges did not have him winning the fight. Right? So even that loss is something Canelo can hold his head high on, especially since the consensus view was that Mayweather was a vet and that Saul Alvarez was the inexperienced, untested, unbeaten guy in that fight. Well, since then, regardless of who you and I think won Canelo fights, right, and he's had several close shaves, we'll call it, right, that Austin Trout fight, I still don't get the scoring. The Eris Landy Lara fight, come on now. Even the Cotto fight, <laughs> I'm not sure of the scoring, um, nor was Freddie Roach, who's been in the corner of a few guys in championship fights, nor Miguel Cotto, who himself is a future Hall of Famer. Right? And of course, you have both Golovkin fights. What I want to say to the people here is, you know, old timers used to tell me all the time, if you count the body shots, looking at that Hagler-Leonard fight, well, Hagler clearly wins the fight. That's if you key on the body shots. Right? Now, I was a Ray Leonard fan back in the day. I decided to rewatch the fight, looking at the body shots. After a while, I said, you know, I'm going to turn this off because I saw the point. Certain rounds that in the moment you thought Ray Leonard won, when you started looking at Hagler's body work, you started to say, wow, that, you know, he was going to the body, wasn't he? Well, if you look at the rematch, the one Canelo officially won against Golovkin, and if you key on the jabs, folks, that, <laughs> I mean, that fight's not even a tie. Golovkin won that fight. At a minimum, that fight is controversial. Right? We don't consider Golovkin to be a jabber. Right? But there he is popping Canelo with a lot of jabs. So I know the Canelo people will say, 
Well, what about the body shots? And I'll agree, Canelo lands some great body shots. I believe there were a couple of times in that fight, if you look closely, where Golovkin looks like he does a little dance after a body shot. But I'll say the body shots pale in comparison to the jabs. Well, let me just say this. Canelo can walk away from the sport at any time he wants. He's been that dominant, officially. His only losses to Mayweather. Officially, he beat Lara. He beat Trout. He beat Cotto. He was the middleweight champion. He got a draw with Golovkin, he, then he beats Golovkin. Understand, let's take a step back. Whether or not you think he won either Golovkin fight, the bottom line is he fought Golovkin twice, he went the distance with Golovkin twice. That by itself is an accomplishment. Let's face it too, Rocky Fielding is not on the Mount Rushmore of great super middleweight champions, but Canelo stopped Rocky Fielding. Understand how that'll look in the history books. Then he drops back down. He faces Danny Jacobs. He legitimately beats Danny Jacobs. Legitimately. Eddie Hearn thought Jacobs was going to win that fight. Right? I thought Jacobs was going to win that fight. Didn't happen. Canelo beat him. So Canelo is a very successful guy who's still in his 20s, who quite frankly has already distinguished himself in the sport. He's hit almost emeritus status at this point. Right? We'll save true emeritus status for the Manny Pacquiao's of the world, guys with even more years of boxing than Canelo. But understand, Kovalev is in a different place entirely, isn't he? This is a guy in his mid-30s who, in my opinion, has trouble making weight. Now, since we're talking about light heavyweights, let's just be blunt here. How many more years does Kovalev have in the sport? Right, folks, you've seen him literally just get roughed up in a fight, that first Alvarez fight. Elidor Alvarez, right, roughs him up. You've seen him get hit in the body and be so confused he starts sitting on a rope. That's the rematch of the Andre Ward series. Right? You see him against Anthony Yard, his most recent fight. He gets hit, folks. He's in bad shape to the point where his own cornerman, Buddy McGirt, tells him, you keep getting hit like that and I'm going to stop the fight. Now at some point, at some point, right, your career comes to an end. At some point you either retire from boxing or boxing retires you. So if you're Kovalev in your mid-30s and you're thinking, okay, I only have a few more big money fights left. And one of the absolute biggest names in the sport a box office king, a guy who fought Rocky Fielding, hardly a household name in America, at Madison Square Garden and gets a sellout. Folks, that was standing room only. If you're Kovalev and you get offered a fight against Saul Alvarez, how much leverage do you have in the negotiation? If Saul Alvarez says, hey, I want you to come in at a catch weight, are you going to turn that down? Aren't you thinking, hey, let me get some big paydays and then graciously leave the stage? Isn't that what you're thinking if you're Kovalev? Kovalev, you know, Kovalev realizes guys like Bernard Hopkins, they're outliers. Folks, this isn't the heavyweight division. This is light heavy. You don't have guys like Luis Ortiz and Vladimir Klitschko and Tony Thompson, you know, an old guard who's still viable on a world stage. Alexander Povetkin, you don't have that at light heavy. You don't. 
So if you're a Kovalev, you're just looking at the calendar and you understand, I don't have that much time left. If the Canelo people, who are tough, very tough negotiators, right? Just hearing that Danny Jacobs had to weigh in a second time and chose not to tells you that the Canelo people put some clauses in the contract that favor their fighter. So if the Canelo people say, hey, look, we want to fight for your title, but we want you to come in at a catch weight, three or more pounds below, 175. Kovalev can even know that he's going to have problems making that weight. But if you're Kovalev and they offer you enough money, and I'm guessing this fight's not going to be in Kovalev's backyard. I'm guessing it's going to be Vegas, Staples, New York City. You know, it's going to be in some big boxing mecca. Right? If you're Kovalev, do you have the leverage in the negotiations to turn down that offer? I don't think you do. So what I think might happen, and we'll see how the negotiation turns out. Maybe Canelo's going to be badass and say, look, nah, I'm not fighting for the 175 title at any weight other than 175. If he takes that attitude, I'll tip my hat to him. He'll be even more of a Hall of Famer. But understand, whether he takes that attitude or not, he's a Hall of Famer. So he's not risking much taking a different attitude. Right? His attitude might be, hey, other guys, Floyd Mayweather, for example, who calls himself TBE, used a catch weight that may have hurt me in that fight against me. Right? Andre Ward, future Hall of Famer, retires unbeaten, used a catch weight when he first fought for the light heavyweight title. Right? Canelo has political cover to say, I want a catch weight just like Floyd and just like Andre, two of the dominant fighters of this era. If Canelo shows up and says, look man, <laughs> my last fight was at middleweight, which it was. I'm here gaining two weight classes, which he is. Let's make the playing field a little bit more even. I want you to agree to a catch weight of three or more pounds. If Canelo makes that demand, I don't think Kovalev's in a position to say no. I don't think Kovalev's made the money Canelo has made in the past. I think Kovalev's acutely aware of the fact that Canelo could pivot and fight a lot of other guys and make big money, right? His deal with the zone pays. If Canelo said to the zone, hey, I want to fight Callum Smith, I think the zone would say, sounds good to us. Right? I want to fight Chris Eubank. Sounds good to us. So I believe, I believe fully that Kovalev might be forced into agreeing to a catch weight. And if he does, folks, you're not going to have Kovalev fighting Canelo. You're going to have the ghost of Kovalev fighting Canelo. Right? He might look like Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. looked when he fought Canelo. Revisit that fight. He's a shell of himself. If Kovalev agrees to a catch weight of three pounds or more, I'll be running to the casino to bet on the middleweight champion. Right? I think many in the public are going to be saying, oh, Canelo is too big for him. Just like I myself argued years ago, before a fight in which Manny Pacquiao took on Oscar De La Hoya, who was contractually obligated to come in the ring at a certain weight. Right? Oscar wasn't allowed to rehydrate for that fight, folks. It showed, didn't it? Right? Understand, too, the catch weight can take several forms. It can be the three pounds or more that I'm talking about, where Kovalev has to come in at the weigh in low. Or it could be like the Pacquiao De La Hoya situation, where Kovalev isn't allowed to rehydrate. So, whatever he comes in at the weigh in at, 
he can't gain a serious amount of weight after that. Just understand, since I believe Kovalev is weight drained already, if there's any contractual stipulation like that, Canelo's going to be my pick in the fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Canelo is a body puncher, folks. In terms of stamina, and I know, I've criticized Canelo in the past. The bottom line is he did go. 12 rounds twice against Golovkin. He just went. 12 rounds against Danny Jacobs. Right? All I could say is Anthony Yard, who stood too upright. Understand, Canelo's not going to stand upright. Canelo's going to be bending and leaning and stuff like that. Anthony Yard is still in the fight. Late. Right? He almost pulls the title in the eighth round. Right? I think Buddy McGirt has accented Kovalev's use of a jab. Kovalev now is not throwing as many home run punches. He's trying to take you out with a heavy reliance on the jab. Canelo is going to make him pay for that heavy reliance because Canelo is shorter, can fight low, conduct a jab. Right? I'm just telling you, Canelo could also take out your body. In that Golovkin rematch, understand Golovkin, very good puncher, right? While I think Golovkin won that rematch, do revisit that tape and look at Canelo's body work. If he puts in that same amount of body work, that same amount of body work on Kovalev, he might just chop down the tree especially if Kovalev is coming in three pounds or more. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.